Welcome to Lecture 3 on Contouring, the third lecture in the IROC series. We estimate that this session should take approximately one and a half hours to complete, and that's inclusive of time practicing contouring. By the end of this session, PGY2 residents will be able to, one, define key components of the contouring process, including GTV, CTV, PTV, and OAR. Two, identify contouring atlases and anatomical guides to assist with the contouring process. And three, contour simple targets and organs at risk. The outline for today's talk is to provide a general overview and then to define the targets GTV, CTV, ITV, and PTV. Then we'll move on to defining critical and avoidance structures or OARs, highlight some contouring resources that may be useful, and then provide some hands-on time for contouring practice. Previously, in the first two IROC lectures that you've observed, you've seen the process that patients move through as they are treated with radiation. And you've also specifically seen what's happened in a simulation. That includes the immobilization of the patient, a CAT scan, as well as recording the patient positioning, including using tattoos. The end result of a simulation is that there is a CAT scan of your patient in treatment position with ample documentation that allows the radiation therapist to put the patient precisely back in the same initial position. But what happens now? The next step in the process is contouring. And contouring is the process by which physicians identify the targets that require radiation therapy, as well as the critical structures to which radiation should be minimized. Here's a relevant example. A 57-year-old woman with a history of stage two triple negative breast cancer treated in 2015 presents with progressive shortness of breath. Her oxygen saturation in the emergency department is 87% on room air with a respiratory rate of 40. A CAT scan shows a small left pleural effusion and a large mediastinal mass severely compressing the left main stem bronchus. The patient undergoes stent placement and her respiratory status stabilizes. Radiation oncology is consulted and your team advises palliative radiation. The patient then undergoes CT simulation and your attending asks you to contour the case. Here is a representative axial view of the patient at the time of her simulation. Please take a moment and look at the image to identify what relevant things you can see and learn about the patient based on this CAT scan image alone. First, you can identify that this is an axial CT scan of the chest. It is contrast enhanced. The patient has had a prior left mastectomy. There is a visible mediastinal tumor. There's a dependent pleural effusion in the left lung. And there is a stent in the left main stem bronchus. There is also chronic superior caval obstruction, which can be observed with the collateral contrast enhanced vasculature draining the contrast on the right side of the chest. Here is the initial image once again, without all of the additional writing. Please take a minute and try to envision where you see the extent of the gross tumor within the patient's mediastinum. Again, Take a moment now to observe this image of the patient obtained slightly inferior to the prior slice and where you believe the confines of the mediastinal mass are. If your computer is equipped, use a felt tip or highlighter pen from the PowerPoint slide to draw for yourself where you think the borders of the gross tumor are.
This is the GTV, or the gross tumor volume, which is the position and extent of gross tumor, what can be seen, palpated, or imaged for a given patient. When contouring the GTV, use the axial, coronal, and sagittal images from the CT simulation to assist with defining the GTV. Oral or IV contrast may be useful for distinguishing between tumor and normal tissue. Sometimes fusing diagnostic MRI or PET scans with the CAT scan simulation can also help with tumor localization. For the purposes of our discussion, I have outlined the gross tumor volume that is evident on this particular slice of the CAT scan image. You can see that the gross tumor abuts the airway as well as the vasculature. Next, we want to identify the CTV or the clinical target volume. The CTV is a margin that's applied to the GTV to account for subclinical or microscopic disease spread that cannot be fully imaged. The CTV might be a uniform expansion of distance around the GTV, but often it is a non-uniform expansion that's unique to each patient and respects anatomic boundaries. I have applied a CTV to this particular image, expanding the area where microscopic disease could be present around the gross tumor volume. As you will see in this particular image with the CTV highlighted in red, the CTV expands into the lung. It's not because we believe that there is microscopic disease sitting in the lung parenchyma, but instead it's to account for the fact that the mass may move with the patient's respiration. And that moves us to our next definition. That is the ITV, or internal target volume, which is the CTV plus an internal margin of the target. The ITV compensates for variations in the size, shape, and position of the CTV that result from internal motion, including respiration, swallowing, heartbeat, or by variable filling of the bladder and or rectum. This is a video image of a patient who is simulated for a lung cancer. You can see that the area in pink represents the area of gross tumor volume. However, I will play the movie so that you can visualize how that gross tumor moves with the patient's respiration. And so the area that is highlighted in red constitutes the ITV, the internal target motion accounting for respiration. Finally, the PTV, or the planning target volume, is a margin that is applied around the CTV to account for uncertainties in planning or treatment delivery. Unlike the CTV or ITV, the PTV is a uniform expansion that is determined by expected patient setup error for a given radiation technique or a mobilization approach. It is typically three to five millimeters in size and does not respect anatomic boundaries. You can see on this image that the PTV is highlighted in purple and represents a uniform expansion around the CTV or ITV. Next, we'll talk about organs at risk, or OARs. OARs are any normal organ or tissue in proximity to the target or in the path of the radiation beam. Here, I have contoured both the lungs, the spinal cord, and the esophagus for this patient, as well as contouring the prior site of mastectomy to account for any prior post-mastectomy radiation that the patient may have received. In assisting you with identifying proper anatomy, there are ample resources online 
but some are used very frequently amongst residents, and we highlight them here. First is an open access site called Head, Neck, Brain, and Spine, which provides detailed anatomy about the head and neck. There is also e-anatomy, which does require a subscription, and you may wish to check with your individual programs about if this is something that they subscribe to. In addition, there are contouring guidelines provided by the RTOG for a number of different disease sites. Um, there's also Prostadoodle, which is a contouring site specifically for prostate cancer. And then there is the open access site eContour, which has multiple cases and examples from which to learn from. Now that we've reviewed both target volumes and organs at risk, it's time for you to begin practicing on your own. Contouring is an iterative process, and it may take some time to feel comfortable identifying both target volumes and organs at risk. But we encourage you to utilize your co-residents and your attendings for ongoing feedback and support.